and Dr. KJ here. Welcome back to Rocky Railway, day four. We're excited for another fun-filled day. Let's start off with our theme song. So stand on up and get ready to sing. Your power will pull us through. We trust in you, Jesus, you're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. We're trusting in you. You give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. journey there's no looking back with jesus to lead us we're on the right track oh, 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 oh. wide open spaces for wide open eyes we're looking ahead for the next big surprise oh, oh, oh. Hey guys, so we've been imagining that we are on Rocky Railway going through the Rocky Mountains. And we're on a steam engine and we're traveling through straight steep mountains going up and down, pulling heavy cars that the steam powered engine needs lots and lots of power. And you know what? When I think of power, we've talked about it all week. Today we're talking about the most important power there is. And our story in the Bible today is about that most important power. And that's the power that Jesus has, and the power that Jesus has to change our lives forever. Now, I'm not going to give you the Bible point, but I believe it has to do with how Jesus helps us love. So I am super excited about that power that Jesus gives. So let's go ahead and sing a song called The Same Power, because that's what it is. The same power that Jesus has lives in us.
guys when we think about power we think about huge big things one of my favorite things to think about when I'm thinking about God's power is the ocean I don't know if you've ever stood when it's quiet at the ocean and you just hear the waves crashing and you can see for a long ways and you can see the power of the water it's really exciting to think of power that way but there's also power in little things so today for our God sighting, we're gonna talk about how we can experience God and see his power in the little things in our lives. And to do that, we're gonna have Pastor, Pastor Todd join us. <laughs> Hello, Pastor Todd. Hello. You ready to share with us a little bit about how God has worked in your life and yeah. you've seen it? Yeah, one of the great things about Powerful, they don't, it's not just big things, but they can come in small packages. And when I think of God's power, one of the blessings that I got to have is one of my friends a couple of years ago had a baby <gasps> and it was really cute and I got to see this very cute baby uh, being not being born but after she <laughs> was she was born I got to hold her and she was really sweet very small but then it made me think of Psalm 139 how God created through his power mm -hmm. um, it, that this little baby was who was holding I was holding in my arms was fearfully and wonderfully made and yeah. so that's just a little bit of how I see God yeah. it's God's power even creating all of us that is so true thank you pastor Todd I really appreciate that and it is true we are fearfully and wonderfully made from when we're very little till the very end of life. And what Pastor Todd didn't know is he created a perfect segue of what we're gonna talk about next. So before we do that, let's get up and get ready to sing our song, Everywhere I Go. Your kingdom is my home 
And I don't walk alone Everywhere I go On this road high and low Where I go I go with you So I won't be afraid This my home Come what may Where I go I go with you Welcome, come in. There's shoes over there. And you're welcome to come. Have a seat, have a seat. We are so glad that you can be with us today. School for kids is very different than in school in the U.S. It starts far younger. Many kids start preschool by the time they're two years old. And they go to school for really long hours. Most elementary schools start at about 7.30 in the morning, and they don't finish until 5. Also, kids wear uniforms. They have their class and their name stitched right on their uniform up, for, up top. And they have hours and hours of homework. Even in preschool, the kids have homework. And then by the time they're in elementary school, sometimes they're doing two or three hours a day of homework. And that doesn't count the hours spent at cram schools. They're called cram schools because they're cramming the information into you. Most kids go to an evening cram school where they learn more math or English or Chinese. And Chinese love tests. There are tests almost every week and then a big test every other month where kids face a lot of pressure to do well on those tests, even from first grade. And if you test well, you get to stay longer at school and even on the weekends. How many of you want to go to school in Taiwan? Yay! Hi guys. Today I'd like to share with you what it was like being a third grader as a missionary kid. Now, our year in home assignment was over after second grade, and so third grade we moved back to Taiwan. We moved to this townhouse in a little tiny country village. I went to a small American international school where all of our education was now in English. As you can see, this is a fairly small classroom, but this was a third to sixth grade classroom. And I was the only third grader, which was kind of challenging. The students though, were more like me. They grew up speaking, generally speaking English at home, were missionary kids mostly, but there were also some business kids where they grew up overseas and their parents had passports from countries outside of Taiwan. The school as a whole was part of a Chinese middle school, so there wasn't a playground. We used a tree to climb around instead. Here are a picture of me and my sister and a couple of our classmates. My sister was part of the first and second grade class and it was a very small school. Tomorrow, I'll tell you what being in fourth grade was like as a missionary kid. This is story time with Mrs. Dodd again. Remember, we're reading the story of Ping Ping and the very hairy, slightly scary man. Remember that the story is about Ping Ping, a boy with lots of problems. He has bad grades, his dad is sick. He tried to go to the temple of Matsu to get help, he tried Buddha speeds and praying Amitofu, but nothing is working. Ping Ping is very sad and he's crying at the park. Let's continue the story. As he blinked through the tears, something startled him. 
Approaching him was a man with hair that covered his arms and legs. I've never seen so much hair in my whole life, Ping Ping thought. He thought about running away. But then he realized it was the very hairy, slightly scary man. The man who would bring a guitar and some toys to the park every week. He and his family would invite other families to join them, sing songs, and listen to stories. Today, though, the very hairy, slightly scary man was by himself. He saw Ping Ping's tears and smiled gently. Are you okay? he asked. Ping Ping froze, shocked that the foreign-looking man could speak Chinese so well. I see that you've been crying, the man continued. Do you want to tell me what's the matter? Ping Ping couldn't remember the last time a grown adult had asked him about his feelings. It was scary, but interesting at the same time. So without thinking, Ping Ping told the very hairy, slightly scary man everything. The man nodded, but before he had the chance to respond, Ping Ping got up and ran home. Who do you think this very hairy, slightly scary man is? Why do you think that? A couple of Saturdays later, Ping Ping was playing with some dogs in the park when he saw the very hairy, slightly scary man in the distance. This time, as the man and his family sang songs, Ping Ping listened. The music was pretty good. Ping Ping learned all the words to the songs and sang them every night before he went to sleep. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the maker of the heavens and the earth. Have you ever heard these words before? If you're not sure, go to Psalm 121 in your Bible. As the days grew cooler, Ping Ping stayed in the park longer. He realized that the very hairy, slightly scary man's stories were as good as his music. They were about a God who created him loved him, and sent his son Jesus to die for him. God knows about all of your problems, the man said to Ping Ping. He wants to listen to you and give you comfort. So if I want his help, do I need to give a big offering or say a lot of Amitofus? Ping Ping asked. No, the man smiled. All he wants for you is to love and trust him. Trust him, Ping Ping said but I don't know him at all yet. I completely understand, replied the very hairy, slightly scary man. He handed Ping Ping a little book. This is a Bible. It will tell you all about God. Now do you know who this very hairy man is? Who do you think is in the picture? Ping Ping took the book home and flipped through it. It had nice pictures. And although he could not understand all of the stories inside, something felt very right about them. What do you think Ping Ping will do after reading the Bible? What will happen next? Tune in tomorrow for more of the story with Ping Ping. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another exciting episode of What Is It? The show where you try to identify something from Taiwan. Let's get started. What do you think this is? This little house standing about four feet high. It doesn't really have a door, it just has that gate. And if you look closely, you can see a power line running into it. If you need more time, you can pause the video. Otherwise, I'm going to reveal the answer in three, two, one. It's a land god house. You said a dog house. You're just slightly dyslexic. It's a god house. If you look closely in the back, you can see the land god and his two servants painted on the back wall. The farmers come here and leave food, water, and other stuff for the land god so that the land god will be good to them and let their crops grow. All right, our next what is it? Look at this picture now and tell me what this is. Uh, if you need more time, pause the video. I'm gonna tell you in three, two, one, it's incense. Taiwan burns a lot of incense. It's used for worshiping the gods and the ancestors. Hi kids. We're back again with Footsteps to Missions. Can you remember the footsteps that we've talked about? Steps that you can take today that you will prepare you to be a missionary? The first one, to accept Jesus as your savior. 
The second, to live God's message. And then two that are similar to each other, to first depend on God and also to pray. And then two more that are paired with each other, to love others and to serve others. Today we have two more that are paired with each other. The first one is to know what you believe. To be a missionary, you need to know what you believe. You need to know the truth about who Jesus is and what it says in the Bible. How do you do that? Well, going to Sunday school, going to church, those are really good things. Reading the Bible, listening to Bible stories, talking to your parents and asking them good questions. Are you learning about what you believe so that you can tell other people? Mr. Dodd and I are here in Taiwan, and when people ask us a question, we can't say, oh wait, stop, I need to go find the answer to that on the internet, or I need to go ask my pastor. No, we spent many years studying about what we believe so that we can tell others. The story you heard today was the story about Jesus dying on the cross and raising from the dead. That's the most important story in the Bible. Do you know that story well? Second, we need to know about what others believe. I need to understand what other people think so that I can tell people in a way that they can understand. You know, when we first came to Taiwan, and even now, we find out all sorts of things about what Taiwanese people believe here. It's really different than what I grew up with. First of all, we need to know what other people believe about coming into your house. When you come into your house, you take your shoes off. If I were to go into somebody's house, walk around with my shoes on, it would sort of be like walking on your table with my shoes. That would be really disrespectful. People wouldn't want to hear what I have to say about Jesus. Instead, I need to understand that and follow their customs. I also need to know that Taiwan believes in many gods. I can encourage them to believe in Jesus, but if I don't know that they believe in many gods, they're just going to add Jesus to their God shelf. Most homes have a house that they have their gods lined up on. They'll just add Jesus to that or maybe a Bible to that. Instead, I need to help them see that they need to believe in Jesus only that only God deserves our worship because Jesus died on the cross for us and was raised for us. And so our footsteps today are two. Know what you believe and know what others believe. See you tomorrow. Okay, there's our house there. And then right across the little street here is our neighbor's field. And he's growing these things. These are not giant Christmas cactuses, uh, cacti. These are uh, dragon fruit. You can see one of the little dragon fruits growing right there. Um, you look closely, there are all kinds of stuff over there. Uh, the, Flowers. I wish I could have gotten pictures of the flowers. Great big huge flowers. Um, let me go down here because he's got one. He doesn't put plastic bags over them. See, so he put it puts a little mesh over top of it um, to protect it, keep the ants and bugs and stuff from destroying his fruit. We have a dragon fruit. And Debbie's gonna cut it up, cut off one end, and then cut off the other end. Ooh, and it's a red dragon fruit. And then you cut it down the middle. Or sort of, and there it is. Look at the inside of it. Ooh, and then that skin just kind of peels off. Oh. There's the other half, and you cut it into chunks, but you have to be real careful because that will stain just about anything. Mm. Hello again. Now we've been learning a lot of different characters through this week. But I think one of the most important ones that I have learned how to say in Mandarin is that Jesus loves you. And I think it'd be really cool for you guys to learn how to say Jesus loves you as well. In Mandarin, Jesus loves you is Yesu Aini.
Yesu aini. Can you guys say that with me? Yesu aini. This is a direct translation. So the first two characters, Yesu, kind of sounds like Jesus. The third character, I, means love. And the last character, ni, we learned on the very first day, means you. Jesus loves you. Have a good day, you guys. Well, thank you again for joining us today. The thing you can pray for us today is pray for the people we're working with, Stephen and Alyssa, James and Joyce. Pray that they will be faithful to Jesus and make disciples of other people as well. And our scripture verse is from Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. So you must go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and you can be sure that I am with you always to the very end. Ah, oh, there's that song. I'm going to be singing it the rest of the day. It reminds me to go out and share with Jesus, share Jesus with others. But just like Pastor Todd said, we're going to talk about that. When you get on a train, you have a starting point and an ending point. Now, the train we have in front of us or that you've seen on the set, it goes around in a circle. But when you go on a train like we're doing with the Rocky Railway, there's a start and a stop. And just like Pastor Todd said, there's a start of our life. And guess what? There's an end of our life. But today we're going to talk about how maybe there's an end of our life, but with Jesus, our life can go on forever. Now, we've talked a lot about boldness and power in here. And if you've been in Kid Zone with me, you know that we always talk about the end of the story. And guys, we are talking about how we get to have hope, faith, and trust that we know the end of the story. So it doesn't matter. We don't have to worry about when our end of our earthly life is because we already know the end of the story. The end of the story is, is if we choose to follow Jesus and we believe he lived and he died and he rose again, when we believe that, we know the end of the story is we get to live with him forever. So even though we think we have a start and stop in this world, our life goes on forever. And so suddenly, the end of things aren't quite so scary. That doesn't mean we aren't sad or frustrated or have emotions here on earth, but what that means is we can have hope in those things. Kind of like the day we had the balloon that popped back up. All right, so that's gonna bring us to our Bible point. Let's first, before we re review our Bible point, let's review our Bible verse for today. The Bible verse today is the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Now that is some amazing power. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. We have that power. And so it leads us to our Bible point. Are you guys all ready to say it with me? Jesus's power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. Let's do it one more time with as much enthusiasm as you can, kind of like Pastor Todd did yesterday. All right, one, two, three. Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. Awesome. So that's going to lead us on to meeting our next Bible buddy. All right, so today I want you to see and hear and our Bible buddies in a little bit different location than some of our others. Let's watch. <laughs> Are you ready to splash into another fantastic day at BBS? I'm Finn, a rainbow trout. I'm happiest when I'm taking a dip in a clean, bubbly mountain stream. Ah, oh, this is the life. This stream is where I began life. This exact spot where I hatch is pretty important to me, but we'll get to that later. I spend most of my day flipping my fins, swishing my scales, and exploring this awesome river looking for food. I love to eat. Me and my fishy friends spend about 80% of our day looking for food. 
I use my mouth to poke around and look for good stuff to eat. And sometimes I end up getting a mouthful of weeds and sticks. Not bad. Of course it's not as good as the bugs or the crustaceans I usually like. I'll even jump out of the water for them. God gave me something super sharp to help me find food. My eyes. They show me what to eat <laughs> and what to stay away from. After being born, I might travel to a new stream far away from my home. But when it's time to lay eggs, rainbow trout always return home. My cousins, steelhead trout, travel from a freshwater stream all the way to the ocean. Even if they've lived in the ocean for a couple of years, they swim against the stream to make it back home. That takes a lot of power. Wow! Home is important to me and my fish family. Jesus knew that a forever home was important too. That's why Jesus died, to pay for all the wrong things you've ever done or will ever do. Because those sins are paid for, you can have life forever in an awesome place called heaven. But Jesus' power doesn't just cover your sins. Jesus is so powerful that he beat death forever. But it gets even better. The Bible tells us the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. That means a friendship with Jesus gives you the same awesome power that let him beat death. Wow! So, if you're feeling worried or sad, or things seem out of control, remember that Jesus' power is bigger than anything, and it's right there for you. Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus! All right, Finn is a fantastic and surprising reminder of Jesus' power and love. <laughs> so what we're going to do today is first we're going to say our Bible point and we're going to yell, trust Jesus, and then I've got something else for you to learn. So let's go ahead. I'm going to read it and I want to hear your enthusiasm. Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust yes, Jesus. Jesus. So today we've decided we're going to do fantastic fives. You want to know what that is? Well, I'm going to tell you. Finn is a fish. You got it? So let's see your fishes swim. Okay, nope, this is not baby shark. Okay, this is Finn. All right, and now they're gonna demonstrate what a fantastic five is. Boop, boop. All right, so today, as you're doing your activities, I want you to remember to give each other fantastic fives. Awesome, thank you guys so much. Stand on up because we are gonna sing Power Shuffle before we move on to our next section. Yeah, I got his power. So don't hold 
Hi, VBS friends today. It, today is going to be so exciting because if you notice, I brought my friend Scruffy. Yeah, I see you, Scruffy. Yep, you're here. Now, I have to tell you about Scruffy. You see, Scruffy has been with me for many, 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 many years. He says he's an old dog, and he is. And Scruffy has been helping me tell Bible stories for many years. Scruffy is a good friend. Now, Scruffy, out there is my VBS friends. Do you see them? Don't see them, huh? That's because they're on the other side. They're kind of on, like, TV, okay? They're in their homes. Yes, I know. That's amazing. And Scruffy, we have been learning about Jesus' power this week. And we've been learning. And so every time we say something about Jesus' power, we get to yell, trust Jesus. I know, that didn't sound very loud, but that's okay. That's because you're a dog. Yep, you are a dog. So, do you want to see how that happens? Okay. Are you ready? Jesus' power pulls us through. Trust Jesus! It scared him. That was a little loud. I think they're going to go louder, okay? So, don't be scared. It'll be okay. Okay, he's ready this time. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus! That wasn't so scary, was it? Nope, because you knew it was coming. Then we heard that Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus! Oh, now yesterday we learned Jesus' power helps us be bold. Trust Jesus. Today, we get to learn an important one. And Miss KJ's already talked about it. I know, you heard me at home, didn't you? We were practicing. Yeah, we were practicing at home. And it's Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. And then Miss KJ, she showed us the verse, and it's one of my very favorites, Romans 8, 11. But the Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. That is so amazing. Okay, Scruffy, now it's time to go. Okay, bye-bye, Scruffy. Bye-bye. Okay, as Scruffy's going down, we're going to talk today about the story of Easter. Now, I have to say, you probably have heard the story of Easter many, many, many times. But if you remember, on day one, somebody said that it's hard to listen sometimes. And so today I'm going to ask you to do something. I want you to listen so careful to the story that I want you to find something new that you didn't know about the story of Easter. The story starts out when Jesus was walking on earth, and it's found in the New Testament, the back part of your Bible, okay? And it's it's Jesus is walking on the earth and he's preaching and he's doing miracles. And remember, there were people that did not like Jesus. They did not believe Jesus was God's son, but Jesus was God's son. But they didn't believe that, and they didn't want him to say he was. These religious leaders didn't like him. And so they started figuring out, and they got together, and they tried to figure out how to get Jesus killed because he's going around and he's saying he's God's son. So one day, the high priest of the temple came to Jesus and said, Hey, Jesus, are you the Messiah, the son of God? 
And Jesus replied, yes, that is right. Now that was bold and the truth. Well, the high priest said, oh my goodness, Jesus has spoken against God. He says he's God's son. He deserves to die. They didn't believe, remember, that Jesus was God's son. So they, these religious leaders took Jesus, they drug him off, and they took him before a guy named Pilate. Not Pilate like an airplane, because they didn't have airplanes back then. This was a governor. He was a man and his name was Pilate. And he went before the governor. And so the governor asked Jesus. And the governor said, are you the king of Jews? He didn't say, are you God's son? He said, are you the king of, Jew of the Jews? And Jesus replied, yes, that is right. He was bold again. Now, Pilate got to thinking, well, if he thinks he's king of the Jews and they're saying he's God's son, that's not any big deal. There's nothing wrong with that. But he had to do something because all these people were angry at Jesus. So he turned to the crowd and he said, crowd, what should I do with him? And they all started yelling, crucify him, crucify him. That meant he would die on the cross. Now at that time, in the Bible times in the New Testament, only if you were really, really, really bad, you died on the cross. But Jesus hadn't done anything bad. All he had done is said he was God's son. He never sinned. He never did anything bad. I cannot even imagine not ever doing anything bad. Pilate didn't know what to do then. So he just said, do whatever you want. Just do whatever you want. And so, I want you to think. Now, what did Pilate ask him? Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? King, king. Let's think about what a king looks like. What does a king wear? Oh, I see a king and he's got a beautiful red robe on. And I see a king and oh, look at all those sparkly jewels in his crown. And then what's a king always hold? A scepter, okay? So the, governor, the governor's soldiers decided they were gonna dress Jesus up like a king. And they put on a scarlet robe on him. And they put a crown on him. But boys and girls, this wasn't a crown that had beautiful jewels in it. It was a crown made of thorns, big, long thorns, and they just shoved it on him and poked him and made him bleed. And then they gave him a staff, a scepter. And they started yelling, he says he's the king of Jews, he says he's the king of Jews. And they started to beat him and they started to whip him and they spit on him and they made fun of him. And then they finally, they tore off his scarlet robe and they hit him with the scepter. And then they drug him off to be crucified on the cross. And you know, while they were there, the soldiers nailed his hands and his feet to the cross. And they put a sign over that on, the top of the cross, and it said, Jesus, King of the Jews. Well, when Jesus died, it affected the whole world. When Jesus died, there was an earthquake, and it got dark. If I'd have been there, it would have been kind of scary. And it was probably scary for them to and it got dark and there was an earthquake. And it says in the Bible, which is true, that in the temple, in the temple, there were big curtains where the priests would go behind. And it says in the Bible that the curtains 
tore in half from top to bottom. And when all that happened, one of the guards that was there by the cross, he shook his head and he looked and he goes, wow, that man must really be the son of God. That man must really be the son of God. So I have a question for you. Why did Jesus have to become human and die on the cross? Why did that have to happen? Think about that for a minute. Well, you know why Jesus had to die on the cross that day? Why he came to earth? It was so I could go to heaven. So you could go to heaven. Because you see, God is so holy, he can't be around sin. And sin separates us from God. And sin makes us so we deserve to die. That's our punishment. Well, instead, Jesus died and he took our sins. He took the punishment for me. Instead of letting me die for my sins, he took the punishment for me. And he took the punishment for all the sins I've done in the past, all the sins I'm going to do today when I might get grumpy, all the sins that I'm going to do in the future, he took them all away. And so when God looks at me now, I don't have any sins. Wow, that is amazing. Now, we know we have a verse in the Bible, and it goes, and it's probably one you know, and it's Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Well, you see, God had a plan, even before creation. And his plan included sending Jesus, his own son, to earth as a human. His plan was that Jesus would come and live a sinless life. And the verse just told us, what? Do we live a sinless life? No. We've all sinned. But Jesus never sinned. And, he's, and he died on the cross for our sins, and then he rose again. Oh, wait. I'm getting ahead of my story. You see, after Jesus died on the cross... They carried his body and they put it in a tomb. And in a tomb is like a big cave. And then they rolled this humongous rock, huge, huge, huge rock. And they rolled it in front of the tomb. And then they set guards out because they didn't want anybody to come and steal his body. Okay? They didn't want anything to happen to it. And he was there for three days. And on the third day, there were two ladies, Mary Magdalene and Mary, and they came to the tomb. And when they got there, an angel was sitting on top of the stone. And the angel said, don't be afraid. Well, if I saw an angel, I'd probably be afraid. And it'd be a good thing that the angel would say, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. If you're looking for Jesus, he's not here. You know, he's risen just like he said he was going to. Well, these women were so excited. They were so excited. They, the angel had said, he has risen, he's alive. They went running off to tell the disciples, Jesus is alive. How exciting. Because Jesus died on the cross and took the punishment for our sins and rose again the third day, he's alive and in heaven today. And we can also believe in him and have our sins gone so we can go to heaven and be with Jesus. And we can live with him forever. Forever is a long time. It never stops. And so what is our point? Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. Now, I bet you all have heard John 3.16 before. Say it with me. 
For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Eternal life means living forever in heaven. So I have a question, but how can you have eternal life? How can you have eternal life? First of all, you need to believe that you have sinned and you're sorry for your sins. You need to believe Jesus is God's son and that he died on the cross and took our punishment for our sins. And you need to believe that Jesus rose again and he lives in heaven. Acts 16.31 says this, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Say that with me. Acts 16.31 Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. So if you want eternal life, what do you have to do? You have to believe that you're a sinner and be sorry for your sins. You have to believe Jesus is God's son and he died on the cross and took the punishment for your sins. You have to believe he rose again and now he lives in heaven. So if you want to no, if you have eternal life, go talk to your mom and dad about it. Go talk to maybe your grandma and grandpa about it. Maybe your aunts and uncles. But find somebody to talk to about it. And then let us know if you got to talk to somebody. And then also remember, what is our point today? Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. Now tomorrow is the fifth day of Vacation Bible School and we have an exciting story and little Scruffy is going to come back because Scruffy doesn't want to miss the very last day of Vacation Bible School. We will see you tomorrow. Hey guys, welcome to Rocky Railway Wrap Up. Say that 10 times fast. We're gonna do a little bit of a review. So we're gonna review that Bible point. Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust, Trust Jesus. Jesus. Perfect, let's do it one more time with as much enthusiasm. Let me read the point first. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust, Trust Jesus. Jesus. Awesome, we also learned that our Bible memory buddy was Finn. And we learned some pretty awesome Fantastic Fives. So my friends behind us are going to go ahead and do Fantastic Fives while I say the point, and then they're going to say, trust Jesus. Are you ready? You guys can do this at home too. Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust, trust Jesus. Jesus. All right. We have talked about God's power today and how it lets us live forever. So we're gonna sing the song, Power in the Blood.
I love that song. We are talking today, obviously, uh, we've heard plenty of times about Jesus' story and what he did for us. So I thought, what better way to end today than to hear the way that God has impressed and moved in somebody else's life? So I have Pastor Jeff here, and he's going to share a little bit about his testimony. A testimony is just telling people how you came to know Christ and a little bit about how it's changed your life. It's a little bit like a God sighting, but it's a specific time when you started your relationship with Christ. So Pastor Jeff, do you want to share with us today? Yeah, I'd love to share how God's story has changed my story. It's so cool. I grew up in a Christian family, and I heard a lot about Jesus Christ, and my Family went to church a lot. In fact, both of my parents had moms and dads that were in the ministry as pastors. So I had a lot of information about Jesus Christ and, and looked at that. But there was still something that was missing in my life because I was noticing that even though it was a Christian family kind of setting, I would you know raise my hand every time when there was VBS. And you they knew would, the right answer. Yeah, they would talk about Jesus and ask you that question: Do you believe in Jesus? And you know, I'll just raise my hand and do those things. And later on in life, I was like, something is still missing, mm -hmm. because I was noticing that there was something inside of me that I did not like. And that was rebellion. I was super rebellious. In mm -hmm. fact, I have to tell you the story. I remember one time that I didn't want to go to church. <laughs> I was so done with church. It was so boring. And I made that morning, that Sunday morning, a really rough morning. Made it so hard <laughs> for my parents. They wanted to give up uh -oh. going. Yeah. So as we're getting out to the car, I remember <laughs> <laughs> they're like, come on, get in the car, you know. And, I got in the back seat and went out the other door. <laughs> Don't do that. That's naughty. <laughs> Your parents will not like that. That's very naughty. But I was like, well, what was happening to me during that time? And I was super rebellious. Did they and ever get you in the car? They finally got me in the car. And mm -hmm. cars were different back then. There was no car seats. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe that? No car seats. We can go back and forth between the seats, you know, fly through the air when we stop really fast. <laughs> But there was something different going on, and I was noticing I was really, really rebellious. And one of the reasons why I was super rebellious, because I was a kind of a low-income kid going to a school where boys and girls had lots of everything. They had the, the best clothes, the best shoes, and, and they would go on these big vacations. And, and every time I went to that school, I was reminded that I didn't have anything, mm -hmm. and I was angry. I was mad because why can't I have those things? And uh, I just didn't want to have anything to do with Jesus, anything to do with the church, until about middle school. I remember that I had a friend at school said, hey, why don't you come to youth group with me? And I'm like, no, I don't want to go to youth group. I don't want to go hang out with uh, church people. And I'd rather just kind of hang out in the neighborhood and do my thing, you know. Oh, no, no, this is what you should do. You should ask your mom to see, make an arrangement where you don't do any homework. I'm like, what? Yeah. yeah, that's what I do. That's what I do. I made arrangements with my mom that <laughs> I wouldn't do any homework if I went to youth group. I'm like, well, I'll give that a try. I don't want to do any <laughs> homework. <laughs> so I went to youth group and I had a blast. It was so much fun, but there was something different. Oh. I remember the small group leader at the time, he was talking about Jesus, his death, his burial, and resurrection in a way that I've never heard it before. Wow. Yeah, that part where Jesus was on the cross, nailed to the cross, and people were spitting on him and, and cursing him and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, if you had all this power, why don't you come down off the cross? Mm -hmm. And that got a hold of me. 
That got a hold of me. Why did he come off the cross? Right. I thought he had power. Right. I thought, I thought he could just wipe these people out if he wanted to. Right. I want to do that too if I had power. I just want to, everybody at school, you know, it's like everyone that's made fun of me and, and everything, I wish I had that power, but he didn't do that. No. He stayed on the cross. And my leader said he stayed on the cross for you, boys and girls. And that's where I believed. My life started to change. I became a, a new person. I recognized that this rebellion was taking over my life instead of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I was around the conversations about Jesus all the time, but never saw it that way. And to this day, I still believe in Jesus. I believe and trust in him that he will take mm -hmm. away my rebellion. And I tell you what, he has. Wow. In fact, I have forgiven my family because of that situation where they had no job from time to time mm -hmm. and I didn't have the best of clothes and, and, and the hard things that came in my life. I just, I forgave because it wasn't their fault. Right. And Jesus changed my life and that's why I trust in him. You know, I was one story. way, yeah, I was one way at one time, but now I am this and I love Jesus and I love telling people about Jesus. Oh, that is amazing. Thank you so much, Pastor Jeff. Man, it's those specific stories that show us how important it is to not only listen to these stories, like Mrs. Flinner said, my mom, if you didn't know <laughs> earlier, you have to listen and hear and learn in different ways because you didn't hear just the gospel message once, right? And I didn't even hear it just once, but I had to recognize, you know what, just because my parents love Jesus and follow Jesus doesn't mean that I am. I need to make my own choice. I need to choose to follow Jesus myself, just like Pastor Jeff did. And then he let Jesus change him. Just like the other things we were talking about, he let Jesus give him hope. He let Jesus give him boldness. And he knows that Jesus' power lets him live forever. That is a miracle. Guys, we talk about this a lot in Kids Zone, and Pastor Jeff's heard me say it. So why did he do all of this? Why did Jesus do this? Why did he die on the cross? Well, hmm, he died on the cross for our sins, but why did he need to do that? Well, he did that so we could be with him forever. But why? Why does it matter if we're with him forever, really? He's God, we talked about it earlier. He could have just made robots, right? No, he did it because he loves us. Ultimately, guys, this whole story is a story about God's love for each and every one of us. He created a way. So yes, we get to live forever, and that's pretty cool. And we talk about heaven and the cool things, but the reality is, the coolest part is, it's because he loves us. And you know what? He didn't just love you after you said you would follow him, right? He loved Pastor Jeff when he was getting out of the car and preventing his parents from going to church. He loved me when I was grumpy, right? maybe yesterday before coffee, right? He loved me then. He loved me before I knew him, and he loves you. And we talked about this in Kids Zone. It's not like he just waits to give his love, he loves you now. So that's our encouragement today. And this VBS wrap up is a little bit different, maybe a little more serious. That's because this is life changing. Jesus is life changing. So that's my prayer, that's our prayer for you. Um, Pastor Jeff, would you lead us in a prayer as we close today? Let's pray. Let's fold our hands and close our eyes. Lord, we thank you so much for your loving grace. Thank you, Jesus, that you love us even before we even choose you. And that's what is drawing us to you over and over and over again. And Lord, I just pray for any boy and girl that's out there listening and watching to this right now that they would believe in you, that you would inspire them, Father, that you would draw them into your great love and mercy and that they would want that in their own life and to see a life of change so they can trust in you. May they trust in you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, guys, now it's your time. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sing a song, Same Power. But before we do that, Remember, we have the rest of the day to do our crafts or imagination station, our games, our choo-choo train snacks, and all of the other fun activities. So it's 
comes to you. So let's end with the song, Same Power, because that's the truth. The same power that put Jesus on the cross and rose from the dead is the same power that we get to have in our hearts if we choose to follow him.